Okay, we're in Volume 9, and we're in Part 3 of Volume 9, The Bible Story. And Part 3, Story 3, Nailed to a Cross. Okay. Now the procession has is on the move again, with Jesus walking a little behind a little ahead of Simeon of Cyrene, Cyrene, who is carrying the cross. The king of suffer, sufferers looked pale and worn out, but he was but very brave. His body was bloody, but unbowed. Roman soldiers in bright armor and with spears on their hand in their hands marched on either side, while behind followed hundreds of friends and enemies, a great company of people and of women, many of them weeping piteously and sobbing aloud. By this time word had spread like wildfires through Jerusalem that Jesus of Nazareth, the beloved teacher of Galilee, had been arrested and condemned to death. The whole city was shocked. People can hardly believe their ears. What a shame, some cried. How could they do such a thing to such a nice, kind man? More and more people started running towards the route we know, route they know, he must have followed as they as he goes to his death. Yeah, Via Della Rosa. The thousand thousands who gathered for the Passover began to move there in the same direction. Soon the street were lined with women with men, women and children, all eager to catch one last glimpse of the strange and wonderful person now doomed to die. And there he is. And he said he was the king. And he looks like a king. Although though his crown was made of thorns. See, he is trying his best to smile through all the cuts and bruises on his face. Now he waved at some boys and girls on the roadside as they tried hard to keep from crying. They were with him in the temple only a day or two ago singing, Hosanna to the son of David. He, know, he, knew, he knows how hard it was for them to understand why he was letting himself be killed. All he can do now is to let them see that the son of David is no coward. He can take the worst that his enemies can do to him without flinching. Did he not say, only last Thursday night, in the world ye shall have tribulation, but... Be for good be of good cheer. I have overcame the world. Now he he is proving it to be true. You can see it on his face. He is going to his death a conqueror. <clears throat> now the procession has stopped. Soldiers and all. Jesus is t taking quite um, is taking quietly to a group of is talking quietly to a group of weeping women daughters of Jerusalem he said to them weep not for me but weep for yourselves and for your children gently he warned them that the dreadful thing which things about to come upon the city was the punishment for its sins. He spake about, he spake 
but a few words, but how brave they are. They tell of the courage in his heart. He certainly, yeah, he is certainly, certainly that his cause will win at last. What a man, what a God. The procession winds through the city gates and up the rough rock shrown path to Calgary, the place of the skull, where for centuries the worst criminals have been put to death by the fearful torture of crucifixion. The soldiers were undressing Jesus now, taking off his robe and tossing it aside. Meekly he lies down upon the cross and stretches out his arms. The soldiers come up with a hammer and a bag of nails. He seizes one of the hands that so often touched the sick and made them well. As he starts to dry the nail through it on the cross, he looks at Jesus, wondering why he hears not a cry of pain. He stops the hammer and listens. Jesus said something. It was it is scarcely more than a whim than a whisper, but this pagan soldier was never had never before heard the like from the lips of, of a dying criminal. Father forgive them, for they know no they know not what they do. It was the first, it is the same when the second nail goes in. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Even when the soldier drives the nails, the nails through his feet, and then, of course, it has a picture of Jesus talking to this woman, this group of women, and then him laying on a cross as the soldiers uh, putting the nails in his hand. And the two page. What it looks like on a page. This is the first one. This is the way the, um, the print is. And then down at the bottom, the soldier put the nails in his hands and his feet. Okay. Even when the soldier drives the nails through his feet, there's still no word of complaint, no curse. No cry of harsh rebuke, no shout of vengeance, nothing but the same tender whisper, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The original Greek words suggest that Jesus not only said this once, but kept on saying it over and over again. So it came, became one of the greatest messages from the cross. Forgive, forgive, forgive. How wonderful it would be if you and I could have this same wonderful spirit in our hearts when things go wrong and people find fault with us and do us harm. Next time you think that somebody at home or at school has even have been unkind to you try to say as Jesus did father forgive them for they do, they know not what they do in forgiving you will both keep your heart at peace and win your enemy's friendship now the soldier soldiers are lifting the cross with its Precious burden. There must be four or five men on the job. They guide it into the hole 
in the ground and drop it. The jar, the jar on the Savior's outstretched arms may must been terrible. Still Jesus said nothing, but Father forgive them. Uh, notice that the sign above his head. Pilate ordered that it be placed there. It reads in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. The king of the Jews. The priest asked him to change it and make it read. He said, I am the king of the Jews. But Pilate wouldn't do it. Yeah, but um, they actually... Uh, the Latin since uh, or the Hebrew uh, it's written in Hebrew and they didn't have uh, consonants uh, some people believe that it had the the Y W Y H on it <coughs> because that's what it looked like Oof, that'd be scary wouldn't it and that's why they kind of got upset because it had the Y H, uh, the Y W Y H, this said uh, Jehovah or Yahweh, and that's what they got. Uh, that's what they were really upset about because it actually had God's name above his head. I mean, that's what some things I've heard. <coughs> and enough of the research and stuff, and in, in all the stuff. All right, let me get back to this. What I have written, I have written, he said. So it came about that the same Roman governor who sent Jesus to his death told the whole world who he really was. Slowly, in great agony, Jesus was is dying. The crowd draws near and watch the end. And sitting down, they watched him there. The soldiers watch as they gambled his, for his garment. The priests watch as they gloated over the victory they think they have won. The women who followed him watch through tear-dimmed tear eyes. People who he once healed of sickness watch with bowed heads and sorrowful hearts. There... Our women, our children watching too. There is a couple of them over there holding on to their parents as they look up at the cross with tears rolling down their cheek. Mingled in the crowd are other boys and girls wishing with all their hearts that they could do something to help him. Poor Jesus, I can hear them say. He was so kind to us. He told us such lovely stories. Why, oh why, does he have to die like this? Nobody answered. Nobody seemed to know. But there is an answer. And then it goes to a verse. He died that we might be forgiven. He died to make us good, that we might go at last to heaven, saved by his precious blood. That's a song. And then it's got this little painting here at the bottom of them um, casting, seeing who's going to win the, the his cloak, the clothes. So they just, they didn't know. They didn't know. And they just, you know, they can't, well, they they didn't know. And they were probably was just told he was just some kind of, um, you know, some kind of thief. You know, they were just doing their job. But I'm sure many of their hearts changed. Because if you watch the, the, the robe, it would be good to watch that. And then we got another one. Whew. 
by Harry Anderson, and it's a big one. Um, the two pager. I wonder where all these paintings are, the originals are at. You can see the cross, and then the mom crying, and the soldiers are just staring at out. They really, you know, didn't seem like they're, they're having, you know, I was like, uh, it's just a job. Okay, well, that was part three, story three, so I'm going to break it up and take the break and be back in just a bit.